Our call for the RBA to commence uh, cutting interest rates by December was very much conditional on that underlying rate of inflation coming down a little bit more quickly than we ended up seeing. So as a, as a result, we don't think the RBA will be in a position to cut rates this year, but we are looking for a first interest rate cut now in February of next year. And what's holding up that underlying measure, the trimmed main? Well, there's still a lot of things that are moving uh, at an elevated rate. And if you look at the key items in the CPI that are elevated, it's really a story around rents. Uh, they're running at a decent clip, albeit the rate of inflation there has moderated. The cost of home building, which is the single biggest uh, ticket item in the CPI, is still running at an elevated rate. Uh, insurance costs uh, are much higher than overall inflation. And even education prices have been running at a, at a pretty elevated rate. You've consistently pushed out your rate cut call. What has surprised you about the strength mm. in the Australian economy? Yeah, look, look, we have, and we haven't been the only ones. Um, you know, at the beginning of this year, a lot of analysts thought that we'd be able to see interest rates cut here in Australia by the end of the year, in line with what we've seen from other central banks. And the RBA now is a little bit of, a, of an outlier in terms of not being able to, or not uh, starting yet the process of, of cutting rates. I think if, if we look at our call and what, what has come in line with expectations has been GDP growth. We've had well below trend growth. Uh, that's what we expected to see given elevated interest rates and that's largely played out. Where we have been surprised though is around the strength in the labour market. Uh, employment growth has, has been quite strong, particularly when you look at the weakness in GDP growth. That overall has kept the labour market relatively tight and to put a little bit more upward pressure on demand and by extension prices. So that's really how we, we square the circle. Directionally though, we're still going the, the right way. At no point this year did we think rates would go higher, as some analysts had, had expected. We still think they'll be going lower from here, but just that start date looks a little bit further away as a result of the inflation data this week. It's really interesting with what's happening in the jobs market, the unemployment rate still running at 4.1%. Mm. It's quite tight, but as you say, very tepid growth economically. How do you square those two factors? Look, it's, it's a challenge that everyone is, is uh, looking at at the moment in terms of reconciling what has been you know, quite strong growth in employment against quite weak GDP growth. And the RBA is on record as saying they've been surprised as well. Um, now, it's worth keeping in mind that the growth in hours worked has not been as strong as the overall growth in employment. So that goes some way to squaring the circle, but it doesn't account for the full picture. I think it's helpful to look at where the, the jobs growth has primarily come from in the economy over the past year. And it's largely been in the non-market sector. Um, in particular, health and education jobs have, been, have seen the strongest growth. And they tend not to be as associated with uh, stronger growth in output. You know, they're, they're jobs where it's a little bit harder to measure productivity and, and output, and therefore it, it, it helps clear up the picture as to why we've had in strong employment growth against relatively weak output growth. And Gareth, the RBA is also watching household spending very closely. Did the data out this week shine any light on how households are using those stage three tax cuts? Yeah, look, we had a couple of key bits of data out from the ABS this week that relate to consumer spending. We had uh, September retail trade, and then we also had out their relatively new monthly spending indicator, which is a more comprehensive read on monthly household consumption compared with retail trade. If you look at both uh, those releases, what it's essentially telling you is that the overall response in terms of consumer spending from the income boost that's come through from tax cuts has been relatively muted. It looks like the bulk of households are choosing to save those tax cuts or uh, accelerate debt repayment rather than go out and spend more money. Gareth Ed, great to get your views. Thank you so much. Thanks, Alicia.